Hello everyone and welcome back to the series of videos on creating a dialogue and idea script. In this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on the drop down uh, aspect of the dialogue in which you're able to uh, select a field. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go in and create the, uh, the elements within the, the dialogue demo uh, dialogue I should say. Uh, first off is I'm going to actually just add that edit box that we're going to use for high values. So I'm just going to place it in here. Um, being an edit box, you know, people enter in the information. What the important thing is, is the back end for verifying and validating the information that's entered before using it in that script. And that will be uh, one of the future videos uh, in this series. I'll show you how to go in and validate. So what I'm going to do is first off I'm going to grab some static text and I'm going to enter the text and I'm just going to say say high value and left 10. So I was wanting to start off on 10. That's just my own preference. There's no real rule about it. Top that looks about good. Actually we can put it up about 30. We can leave it like this. So that'll be the high value. Next thing is I want to add in the edit box. So the edit box again, I like to line them up. So this is, has a top of 30. I'll make sure this is top 30, left 59. You know, not really important. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the ID to text high value. Now you notice here there's also a style and there's a, I've recently discovered uh, what all those styles are and I'm going to create a separate video just on the styles. So for right now I'm just going to leave this blank uh, but in another video I'll show you how to use the style options. So I'm going to just leave that as is so there that looks good high value. Uh, if you remember from the intro video there's also one for the uh, calendar. I'm going to leave that for another separate video because it'll take a whole video just to do uh, integrating the calendar into this script. So now I'm going to go in and I want to focus in on the uh, drop down field. So again I'm going to add in some static text and the title I'm going to call this amount field. So then the amount field. Again I'm going to go left 10. Yeah I'm going to do the height 10. Text I leave it as is because I'm not actually going to change anything so if I'm not going to change it I just leave it as the default. And now I want to go in and I want to do the drop down combo box. So this is usually the one that I use most often when I want to do any type of selections from a drop down. So here the top was 47. Actually let's just change this to 50. Change this to 50. Why don't we make this line up nicely with this box here. So this was left. We'll do this 55. Here we'll change this to 55. And then we'll just make it larger because, you know, field names can be fairly large. So we want to make sure there's enough room to capture the field names. Okay, so I've captured that. Now I want to do two other things here. Is one, I'm going to change this. I'm just going to call this amount, drop amount field, give it the ID. And for any of these boxes, because you're going to be have a drop down and the drop down is populated from an array, you have to give it the attached list. And I'm going to call this list box one string. So this array will hold the items that will be displayed in this drop down. So I'm just going to go back. So I'm just going to save as, I'll just call this number four, so that we don't mix these up. Okay, so now I've got the items here, so now I want to create some code. So first off is I'm going to create the code to capture the information that will be whole, held in the, the amount field. And this is driven by the file you select. So what happens is when you select the file, it'll realize the file's been selected, the code will then go grab all the fields, or all the numeric fields in this instance, place it in this dropdown. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go in and add a new field. So I'm just going to call this function, oops, get numeric field in function. 
Now what we're doing is we're grabbing the field names. So if you're not sure how to do this, always go into language browser. We'll go back to the language browser. And if I go in and look, there's an item called field. And there's an item called, where is it, field name. And there's also one to say is numeric. So if we open up the field name here, we can see that first we have to grab the database. We then grab the table, table information. We then grab the field. And in this instance, I'm going to show you how to put this in a loop. So we'll loop through each of the fields. And then we'll place the field name into the array that will be attached to that dropdown. So first off, I'm going to create some variables. So dim db as the database, dim table as the table, dim field as the field. Then I'm going to do dim i as integer. So this will variable will hold, uh, be able to hold the items for looping through each of the the items in the field. And also I'm going to do do first time as boolean. I add that in because since we're dealing with an array and we don't know what the length of the array is, that I add in the variable here. So if it's the first time where we want to do something a bit different than all the uh, subsequent times. So I've got that. So now I'm just going to do sit database equals client open database s file name. So if you remember the set db equals nothing. So I always set these up in the beginning. You remember that this variable here holds the file name. It also holds the file name and the path information for the database we're interested in. So the next thing I want to do is grab the table information, which is set table equals to db.table def. And like I showed you before, this is all in the, uh, the browser here. If you need to go uh, copy, you could actually do just a copy paste and I'll do something, nothing. And you notice how, this is how I've sort of gotten the habit of. I usually indent when I'm doing the uh, the objects. So I'm setting them up here. You don't have to. A lot of code doesn't have it. I just find it a bit more readable like this. Now, IdeaScript allows you to do this. If you're doing something else like now, uh, an idea you can write scripts in Python. Python, you couldn't be doing anything because indent actually means something in Python. In IdeaScript, it doesn't. It's just extra white space. So I can get around, I'll get away with doing this. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to just do the set first time. I'm going to set it as true. So when I'm coming in, running this function for the first time, I want this Boolean variable to be set as true. And you'll see why in a second. Next, I'm going to create the loop. So I'm going to do 4i equals 1, 2. And here, table.count, I'll just do the next i, table.count is the number of fields contained within the table of this file. So this will allow me to loop through all of the different fields within this file. So doing this, then I'm just going to do set the field equals table.get field at. So you have two options for the get field. You can just use the get field if you know the name. Here we don't need the name. So using the at allows me to loop through each one of these fields. And since I know the number of fields in here, I'll loop through each one of these fields. And I'm just going to do the set field equals nothing after the next i. So I'm not actually opening and closing it each time. Next thing I want to do is remember we're only interested in the numeric fields. And if I go back to the language browser in fields, there's an item here called is numeric, returns true at the field is numeric. So I want to test to see is this numeric. So I can go if field dot is numeric, then else and if. So if it's numeric, oops, I don't need the else here, sorry. Let's get rid of that. So now if it's numeric, next thing I want to do is I want to test, is this the first time through? Because if it's the first time through, I want to set up my array. So I'm going to go if b first time, then else and if. That's where I wanted the else earlier on. Let me scroll down here. So what I'll do here is, since it's going in here first, now I want to send this, set this to false. I don't want to forget that. If I don't set this, it'll just be going for the first time each time, and you'll get up a, you'll end up getting an array with like only one item in there or something weird. 
So what I want to do is remember when I created this drop down, I did an attached list. I created an array called list box one. So what I want to do here is I want to initialize that. So I want to redim it. Or actually I just want to do this. I want to say one. Because I'm going to just do it as one item. Now, oops, I did a typo here. Now, unfortunately with fields, you got to remember, arrays start at a zero, fields start at a one. So there's always going to be a bit of a disconnect. And we'll see how the even more of the disconnect later on when we go obtain the items that we selected. Now, uh, there is an option to go in and redefine the start of the arrays at one. Uh, but I just leave it as zero and I just play with the numbers here. So in this instance, what I'm doing is I'm actually creating an array of two items, but zero item I'm going to ignore. And what I'll do here is I'm just going to get list box one. So this first item, and I'm going to say is equal to to the field dot name. So there, I've set up the first one. Now on the next loop, uh, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'm going to uh, increment my array by one item to add on another item at the very end. Now, if I didn't, if I was interested in all the fields, what I could have done is I could have defined this list box at the very beginning with the table count. So I wouldn't have to be going through all this. The only reason I'm going through all of this is because I'm only looking at a subset of the fields and I don't want any blanks in my array. So this is how I get around that. So how I increment this by one, there's some code here. There's, we'll use the redim. So I'm redefining the list box. But there's also something called preserve. So what the preserve does is it remembers what the an array is, has previously in there. And then I can go in and say list box can't type. So I'm using my array. And then what I'm doing is there's a function called uBound that gets the number of items. In this instance, there's two items in this list box. So I'm getting the number of items in this array. And I'm adding one to it. So I'm incrementing the maximum number of items in this array by one. And then what I'll do is I can just go grab, let's go grab this. Uh, equals to the field name. So then using the uBound, I'm saying, okay, I'm adding on the field name to the last item. And that's it. And if you want to close your database, because sometimes you might not want to keep open, you can do DVD the close at the end before doing nothing. Now let's go and actually attach this. So there's two ways to do this is I can attach it at the very beginning. So when I open up my dialog, I can go in and see if there's been a file selected. Sorry, I just realized I forgot to do, do something in the previous video. So I'll just do it now. Uh, so right now we always have to have a file open. Well, actually, I'm going to create a separate file for that. So I'm just going to end up creating, adding this code here. So when I go in and select the file name, first off, I want to make sure that this file name exists. So what I'm doing here is because if I click cancel, what will happen is it will return nothing. It will turn an empty string. So this, this file name will be equal to nothing. So I want to make sure that there is a file name. And then what I'll do is I'm going to go call. And I call it get numeric field. So I'm calling this function here that then populates the, uh, the numeric fields. So the drop down list. And then I'm going to go attach it. And how I attach it is I use the dialog list box array function and I go in and I'll grab wh wh which element I want to attach it to which is the drop amount field and then I attach box one and I attach this I attach the list box that I created the array that I created down here in the get numeric field 
Okay, so let's see if this runs. I might have done a syntax error. No syntax error, perfect. So, okay, so let's actually just hit cancel. Uh, let's see which file. So here we've got several fields, we've got several numerics. So let's use this file here. So let's go back in. I'm gonna run this again. So let's go select the file. We want the detailed sales. And here, you know, here we've populated it. Now you notice we've populated it, but we've populated it in the order that it is within the idea file. Maybe we want to populate it so that it's alpha, actually in alphabetical order. And we can do that. And how we can do that is I'm going to my, sorry, I'm going to my website. So I've got a section here called Idea Snippets. If I go through here, let's go see. I don't remember exactly where it is. You know, this is how to sort an array. So here's some code how to sort an array. So I'm just going to grab this, go back into function, add it in. Unfortunately, it's badly formatted on my website. I got to change that someday. I'm just going to reformat so it makes more sense, so that the for loops line up. So this allows it to loop through. So what I'm going to end up doing is adding some code at the very end, and I call sort array, and I send it the list box one. So it sends this information to my array, and since I'm sending it directly, I'm sending it as a reference, which is default. When it makes the changes to the my array, it's also making the changes to the list box one. Now if I go and rerun this, again I will select the the file, get detail sales. And now you notice that now it's in alphabetical order which I like a lot better because sometimes it's the fields, you can have like 50 fields there, and if they're not in alphabetical order, it goes makes for a lot of looking. So I'm gonna leave this video here. What I'm gonna do is the next one I'm gonna give is there's something that I forgot to do in a previous video that I will do add in there. So anyways, until the next video, thanks.